All right, so now what we're going to do right here is we're going to bring on a very, very special guest. And uh, I've discovered this guy on TikTok, and I was like, man, I love this guy's analysis. I just want to go ahead and bring him on and just talk about a, a topic here real quick. We're going to be talking about Joe Brady being fired from the Carolina Panthers, talk about the Carolina Panthers and their status moving forward as well. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Theo Ash. Theo, how you doing? I'm great this morning. I'm great this morning. I'm excited to be on and talk about the very strange situation that's been going on in Carolina really all year. Interesting to see because it was during their bye week, really, that they made that decision to, hey, something's going on with the offense, and you faced a pretty tough defense in the Miami Dolphins, so I would think that you would just be like, hey, let's just go ahead and ignore that week. But Joe Brady being fired in week 13, what happened? What led to this moment? Well, it sounds like there was some disagreements with the philosophy between Brady and Matt Rule. It sounds like Rule wanted to kind of go more old school. He had this goal of running the football 30 to 33 times per game. And Joe Brady just was maybe running it half of that when he was calling the plays. So it seems like there was some things with the philosophy of running the football and some technical disagreements between Rule and Brady. And on top of that, maybe Brady could get a slide, a pass if the offense was good, but it's not. So you've got two people who are disagreeing. The offense isn't where it needs to be. Um, I think Matt Rule is kind of behind this change. And he said, you know, I went and kind of hired a guy I wasn't quite comfortable with, hoping that would kind of breed innovation and breed disagreement would would bring innovation. Um, but it really hadn't in the in that Panthers offense. But that's so I think that's the main reason why they let him go. Now, is that the right decision? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, that's definitely debatable whether it was the, the right move or not. Uh, but as far as the Panthers moving forward, um, and especially I want to hone in on Christian McCaffrey as well. Now, he's been injured the last couple of years, but he's been known as like, OK, this is the guy that is the offense of the Carolina Panthers. Does that change at any point? Like what is the state of the Carolina Panthers offense moving forward? Well, I don't think they're in a great state. I, I mean, you look at like who are the the key guys you've got on that offense and you've got DJ Moore and you've got Christian McCaffrey. And that's about it. Those are really the only two guys and, and Motna, the right tackle, I guess, who they just re-signed. But McCaffrey's always been hurt. DJ Moore's contract is, I think, running out this offseason. So I assume they re-sign him. Um, but right now, there's just not a ton of answers, and there's a lot of things to fix. Robbie Anderson was supposed to be a solid wide receiver, too, and Terrace Marshall Jr. was supposed to be a solid wide receiver, three. But both of them have been pretty underwhelming this year, so you've got maybe some things to fix in the wide receiver room. The offensive line is just a total mess. McCaffrey's always hurt. The Panthers quarterback room, I don't know what the answers are. Just throwing things. Oh, uh, well, Teddy Bridgewater. Oh, that's not working. Uh, I'll trade for Sam Darnold. Oh, that's not working. Uh, we're going to sign Cam, Cam Newton. It's like none of those guys ever really seem to like – it seems like long shots. So in the draft, I expect them to be in the quarterback market because I'm sure Rule wants some stability there and something he can actually build around. So that – that's, that's kind of what I'm expecting from them this offseason is a quarterback in, in the draft, re-signing DJ Moore. And with rules want to run the football, I expect Christian McCaffrey to stay there. I expect him to get a huge workload early in the season, and I fully expect him to get injured again because that's just the way it's been going with him. That's what I kind of expect the future of the Panthers to look like. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunately that's just – how it's been with the Carolina Panthers with Christian McCaffrey as well. Uh, if you guys are just joining us, we're being joined by uh, Theo Ash uh, again at Theo Ash NFL on TikTok and Twitter. Uh, we talked about the Carolina Panthers, Joe Brady getting fired, the state of the Carolina Panthers offense as well. You got in touch base on Cam Newton, and you expect them to kind of draft someone. What's the quarterback position looking like? And if the Panthers go in that direction, who's someone that they could draft? I mean, there's some solid guys around. They're just not really like, I don't know where the Panthers will be drafting. If they're drafting like 16th, 17th, there might be some guys who are worth taking in that range. But my concern for this year's class is more like if you're the Lions and need a quarterback and you've got the number one pick, it's like, geez, it gets a little bit sketchy taking some of these dudes. But once you get kind of in the middle of the first round, 
um, I, it, I start to feel a little bit better about it. And some of those guys is um, Kenny Pickett is one. And he is someone that is got, he's Burrow. He's so Burrow. He's old. He's a little bit too old for a draft prospect, just like Burrow was. He was older than everyone. Um, Pickett's just a couple months younger than Justin Herbert, who was drafted like two years ago at this point. So he's old. He's kind of got the same build and play style. His hands are small, only eight and a half inches. So when you're trying to grip and totally rip a football, um, it helps to have huge hands, which he just does not. They're well below the threshold of what teams look for. So maybe arm strength and ball security an issue with him. But man, he's a gamer. I mean, he you saw the fake slide that he hit the other day. Um, he, he plays a little bit like Burrow in college where he's running around really difficult to track down in the pocket and just can make something out of nothing with, um, just kind of mojo and moxie. And he's just that kind of guy. So Burroughs, I think is a really good comp to look to, um, with, with Kenny Pickett and Burroughs playing very well this season. So that's not a horrible guy. If you wanted to take him, um, I kind of like Carson strong out of Nevada, even though he can't move. He, that's my one hang up with him is he moves like like Broncos Peyton Manning as a rookie. <laughs> like he just, he's just not a guy in the open field who's going to be dangerous at all. So, but outside of that, everything is so good. The arm strength, the decision-making, the IQ, his head is always on a swivel, making his reads. So I like mobile guys in this day and age. I really do. I think that's important. So that maybe limits the ceiling of what Carson Strong is, but man, if he could move a little bit, I would be so in love with him. So he's someone I wouldn't necessarily blame a team for taking Matt Corral and Matt Corral is a dude who probably maybe has the highest ceiling just because his movement skills are so good. And he's someone who can just take off and run like, like that. His acceleration is so good. And, and it helps so much as a rookie when you don't know what you're looking at, you don't have to make a throw. If you're mobile, you don't have to make a mistake. If you, if you're confused by the coverages, you can get what you can with your legs. So I love mobile rookies. I love them. So Corral's a guy that you might get. My, the, my problem with him is he's kind of got to beat the, like I said, he's got to beat the system quarterback allegations that I have for him where he will look at a concept. It's not there. Okay, I'm going to take off and run. I'm not really going to read the whole thing through. That old Miss offensive line, super good. You know, I don't really have to deal with pressure all that much. In the NFL, that just doesn't happen, especially in Carolina. So I've got some problems with Corral, Strong, Pickett is there. Yeah, and also, uh, I mean, a guy that could stay in the same state as Sam Howell. Um, if they wanted oh, to go right, that, right, right. Down that route. Um, right, right. Yeah, in the same same state. And I think that matters for a quarterback. I think that matters for a prospect. If the lifestyle adjustment, like I'm thinking like at the number one overall pick, there's Aiden Hutchinson and Kayvon Thibodeau. That's like kind of what the debate right now has gone down to. It's like, which edge rusher do you take? And I think it matters that Aiden Hutchinson is from Michigan. Like, I think that matters that, that all of his friends, his family, his support system is there. There's no lifestyle change. He just, can just get right to work without adjusting to a new place. I think that, you know, when, when a team drafts a guy who fits just the whole lifestyle of living in that location, it, it can do nothing but help, you know, maybe it doesn't make a, or break a career, but it doesn't hurt a career where I think like maybe a small town guy going to LA that can just be disorienting and that can just be like a big thing and just overwhelming. So I think that that does matter. Um, Howell is someone with a big arm. He's thick. He's got size. He's got, he's hard to bring down whether he's on the run or in the pocket. Um, so Howell is a guy that I haven't looked at a whole lot. Like I have the other guys, but yeah, I think there's reason to believe Howell might be on the table for them as well. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, uh, throw it out of the question just because um, I mean if you look at Matt Rule Teddy Bridgewater Sam Darnold trying to go with that more pocket passing quarterback yeah 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 Cam Newton is more like uh, okay he's the best available let's go ahead and bring him back Carolina yeah sure like you know it'd be a feel good story for him um, but yeah that's that's it Theo I just wanted to get your thoughts on, on the Carolina Panthers and I appreciate you joining us um, go ahead and uh, plug yourself like where where can we find you you can find me at Theo Ash NFL on TikTok, Theo Ash NFL on Twitter. And if you want me on Instagram, it's Theo two underscores Ash, but I don't really talk football there. Uh, I just kind of post about my personal life. I also have the Stay Hot podcast, which you can find on Spotify. We're chart we just charted again. So that's exciting on Apple, Stay Hot Pod, YouTube, Stay Hot Pod, Instagram, TikTok, Stay Hot Pod. I run that with my friends Bladen Kirk and Matthew Sponauer. So if you want to listen to more of me on the podcast, I've got that. I got my personals and 
yeah, hope you guys all follow. For sure. And uh, after the stream ends, I'll go ahead and put a link in the, the description for for all of those. Uh, Theo, thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you have a good one. Hope you have a good one as well. Thanks for having me on. For sure, for sure. We'll connect after this, um, and we'll, we'll talk more. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was Theo Ash joining us. Uh, again, I saw him on TikTok. I was like, this guy, I love his analysis. I want to bring him on, uh, talk some football. So uh, very, very appreciative of, of him taking his time.